bless you. We honor you and we love you. In Jesus' name. We thank you for watching over our pastor. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we him while he's Build him up. Yes. We thank you for the power that you have upon his life. The anointing that's on his life. Glory to God. The wisdom that you give him, we thank yes. you, God. Yes. Thank you, we bless you, Hallelujah. we honor you, and yes. we love you. Yes. Amen, yes. amen, amen, amen. We have a short testimony this day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Well, it's a testimony. We're all here. We're all yes. alive. Amen. Yes. 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 That's a testimony in itself. Yes. 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 Minister Yolanda spoke about the covenant keeper. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Scripture was Genesis 9, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 9, verse 16. Uh -huh. And this is where God promised Noah about the rainbow. When we see the rainbow in the sky, amen. Yes. Says God promised Noah that the rainbow reminded him mm -hmm. not to destroy the earth again. Amen. 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 And as I kept going over that and kept going over that, mm -hmm. uh, it came to me that the rainbow reminded God not to destroy the earth again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And then every time I see the rainbow, uh -huh. sometimes. <laughs> This is just me. Sometimes mm -hmm. I think, well, God, are you thinking about destroying the earth again? You know, because it says, uh -huh. you know, I know sometimes when I make a promise yes. to somebody, yes. and then when I get ready to break it, the Holy Spirit will say, yes. I, 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 right. if you made that promise. Yes. So sometimes I have to ask God and myself, yes. 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 thinking about, you yes. know, destroying yes. the earth. But the rainbow reminds him that yes. he made us a promise yes. that he yes. would not destroy the earth again. I so yes. I thank God for that. Yes. And glory yes. to God. I give him all the praise for yes. 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 that. Yes. 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 Yolanda also talked about how God was proud of Noah. You know, mm -hmm. he told Noah yes. to build the ark. And, mm -hmm. and you have to put yourself in Noah's place where, you know, he's building this great big ark. Yes, ma'am. People are talking about yes, it yes, and laughing at him, you yes, know. Yes, and, yes. And, but he, he stayed the course. He, he didn't yes. quit. He didn't give up. No, and, no. There's God's people. That's what we have to do. Right. Yes. No matter who does what, who right. says what. Right. We got to yes. stay that course, glory yes. to God, yes. and not quit, not give up, amen. amen. No matter how many times we fall, we get back up, glory amen. to God. Amen. We don't fall and stay down, glory no, to right. God. Amen. But we just continue to keep the course. That's right. Yes. Amen. Continue to just keep the course. Amen. Continue to stay on the course. Amen. amen. So that, that he was proud of Noah for mm -hmm. staying on course. Yes, Lord. Because, I mean, that had to be a hard task. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Put yourself in his mm -hmm. shoes. That was a hard task, you yes. know, to build a great big old ark. Yes. It ain't never rained before. Mm -hmm. yes. the ark. Yes. And people are talking about you. How many yes. times have you? God told us to do something right. that didn't make no, no sense. sense. No sense. And people are like, you gonna do what? You right. said what? Yes. You right. know? Yes. People, you know, they'll try to throw you out yes. like God yes. really right. said that. Right. Yes, he yes, did. He yes. yes, he did. Yes. You just stay the course no matter what That's somebody right. else say, That's no right. matter how somebody else look at it or feel. Right. Amen. 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 And when we know God's promises, mm -hmm. Regardless of any given situation we're in, and then yeah, yeah. what others might say, you know, again, we're not to quit, we're not to give up because yeah. God promises cannot and will not change. They cannot uh -huh. and they will not change. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. See, he don't change up on us like people do. Right. 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 He can right. change up on us, glory to God. He Amen. don't change up on us. Amen. Amen. So with regardless of whatever situation we're in, amen, we don't yes. quit, we don't give up. Right. We keep pressing forward, yes, we keep Lord. standing on yes. the word of God, because yes. he is the covenant, yes. right? Yes. His promise yes. is, yes. don't change. Amen. Right? And when we learn to stand on them, amen, amen. we can press on them. When yes. we learn to stand on them, we can keep moving. Yes. Even if we fall, we can get yes. back up. Yes. Right. Because yes. he don't change. Yes. His right. promises don't change. Yes. Right. His word don't change. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. And so, I mean, it's a win-win it's situation. A win -win. Amen. Amen. So that is the review from last week. Mm -hmm. And I am about to bring up Minister Yolanda Amen. to give us new wisdom, new knowledge, and new Amen. understanding. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Good evening, good evening, <coughs> online and in the building. We're just so appreciative of everyone being here today. Amen. Amen. So we're going to continue in our acrostic. Amen. Amen. So we were, we've been working in our acrostic, and um, the word that we've been looking at is perfection. Mm -hmm. And so, hallelujah. So we're we're continuing in that, and this week we are on the T. Amen? Amen. And so I'm going to ask if anybody can remember, if anybody can remember, so our, our acrostic has been perfection. What does the P stand for? Promise keeper. Promise keeper, good. What about E? Everlasting mercy. Everlasting mercy. R? Redeemer. Redeemer. S? Faithful guide. Faithful guide. E? Uh, eternally committed. Eternally committed. C? Covenant keeper. Amen. And this week is T, and it's transformational. So we're going to talk about the transforming, transformational power of God. Amen? Amen. And transformation as it relates to us as his children. So, um, the, the, the base scripture for tonight is Romans 12 and 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen. So that's our base scripture. So this is telling us that to be transformed, that we have to renew our mind. Amen. And so what we're going to do is I want to go backwards a little bit and give you, make this a little more realistic. Because we've, we've heard, if you've been in church since you were little, you've heard, you know, you need to change. You need to change. Yes. you gotta, you got to do something different. Yes. And so I want to kind of give you the why of that today. Amen. Amen. As well as we're, we'll go over some scriptures that talk about transformation. Okay. So we're going to start with Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. And it says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Amen. And so we're talking about a government, amen, that was coming on the shoulders of Jesus. That the, the, the child is born and the son is given, that was Jesus. And so it says the government will be coming on his shoulders. So his his ruling power, amen, the, the power and the, the ruling that we should be following, the government will be on his shoulders. Amen. And so Jesus came into the world, amen, at the appointed time, and then he uh, he was raised up um, from a, a baby, and then he went got baptized by John the Baptist, his cousin, mm -hmm. and then he was led into the wilderness mm -hmm. um, by the Spirit of the Lord, and he was tempted in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And so he did not succumb to the, the enemy, mm -hmm. and he passed the test, amen? Mm -hmm. And then so he found out John had, the Baptist had got arrested. Mm -hmm. And so John got arrest, arrested, mm -hmm. and then Matthew 4, 17 says, from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh -huh. So Isaiah 9 was talking about a government being on Jesus' shoulders. Uh -huh. 
And then in Matthew 4, 17, he started teaching about that government. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what is that government? What is that ruling government? Okay, well, I'm going to say it one more time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Isaiah chapter 9, 6 and 7, it says, it says, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there shall be no end of his government. Okay, Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. What is the government? Kingdom of God. There you go. Good job. The government that was upon his shoulders. The kingdom of God. So we have to remember that word kingdom. Amen? Because the kingdom has a what? A government. And who is the leader of the government? Christ, because he is the ruler. What's the ruler? He's what a, he's the blank of blank. There you go. He's the king. <laughs> okay. So he's the king of kings. So he's the king, right? So who makes and sets the rules of the kingdom? The king. Exactly. Right. So the government was upon his shoulders. So the government in heaven was coming down to earth. Amen. The government, when it came down, when Jesus came down, the government came down with them. Right. So he was bringing back a government. Amen. Because what does it say when, when we, so he was the propitiation, he died on the cross, rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand, right? He's king. He's the king of all kings, amen? And so then in Colossians 1 and 13, it says, when we get saved, we are transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, which is the kingdom of Jesus, amen? And so what I'm, I'm, driving at here is that there is a kingdom that came with Jesus and when we get saved we're translated back into that kingdom the kingdom of the dear son so no longer then are we just citizens we're not citizens of this world but it says we're sojourners passing through right where is our citizenship it's in heaven right so this is what I'm driving at so our citizenship is in heaven so if our citizenship is in heaven then what government are we following or should we be following as Christians? The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, exactly. That's exactly what I'm driving at. So, if there's a king, let's just go back and think about, um, let's say, King Henry VIII, okay, of England, right? So, King Henry VIII, when you disobeyed his orders, what happened? You got your head chopped off because it was considered what? Starts with a T. Uh huh. Treason. Good. When you don't follow the orders of the kingdom or a king, then you you die because you have defected from the kingdom. You're saying I'm not going to follow this leadership, and so justice, according to God, demanded because he he was the ruler. He was the one who set everything up on earth back in the Garden of Eden. So when he said, "Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil." And man and woman ate from the knowledge of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. They committed what? Treason. treason. And according to treason, if you commit treason, what is supposed to happen? And what did he say? If you eat from this, you will surely die. Right. Okay. So when man when man defected, he kicked them out of the garden because in the garden there was another tree which was called the tree of life. And so he couldn't let them eat from that because then in the fallen state of man, they would have to stay. Amen. It would be that forever. So, yes. So when we said die, we, we, we all come to a place like now. We live and then we die. Otherwise, at one time, it doesn't get right. We live forever. Right. Right. We got kind of crowded around here. You said what? We kind of crowded. You said we got a crowd around here? Yeah, we got a Everybody lives. Oh, if everybody lives, we got a crowd. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sure he had a plan for that. He had everybody done what they were supposed to. But since they didn't, amen, then man physically began to die. Now, back in the day, they lived to be like in their eight, nine hundred, two hundred, three hundred, and all of that, right? 
But now, you know, we live around 70 to 80 years, something like that. So we were promised 70, but he said, and you're doing good if you get the extra 10 and get 80. Amen. And so, um, so the point is that you're appointed. If you commit treason, you are appointed to death. And that's what God had said that up at the beginning. But because he loved us, he had already had a plan for when man sinned. And that sin was, I mean, and that plan was to save us. And he was saving us through who? Through Jesus. So now he's, Jesus has died for all of our sins. Yes. And so then he sent the government back on his shoulders. And so now the government is here again. And he's telling us now, come out of the world come out of your own mind, come out of your own system, and get back into this government, amen, that I've established and set up, amen, when Jesus is the king. So now, if when we sin, the sins have already been taken care of, but because we're in the kingdom, then we should submit to the who? To the government, to the king, amen. And so this is what we're doing. Let's say you're in America and you decide you don't like somebody and you go kill them, what's gonna happen? There are consequences, right? You're, you can't just do what you want to do. Amen? amen? Hallelujah. So there are consequences to sin. Amen? amen? And so we want to get do the, the right things because there's automatic consequences built into sin. There's automatic consequences. If you're if you are um, if you're smoking, what could happen? You can end up with lung cancer. What if, if the Bible says that there's um, Oh, there's some sins that lead to death and some sins that don't. The Bible says there are some sins that lead to death and there are some sins that don't. But God has given us the power to come out of that and give us power over that. Amen? Amen. So this is that transformational power we're talking about tonight. Amen? Amen? And so we're transforming from the ways of the world and the things of the world and the things of our flesh. Because how many know that, you know, there, there's urges and things that come from your body and your mind and your heart. And if you are not careful and you are not um, renewing your mind, if you're not if you're not taking your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ, we end up doing some things that are against the kingdom, right? By the renewing of your mind. Exactly. And so that's what we have to do is be renewed in our mind. But I just wanted to give that the reality of the kingdom of God. So that is the reason why we need to change our ways because there is a government that is here that is above the world, that is above the world system, that is above what you think and above what I think. Amen? It is the kingdom of God. It is his ways. Amen? It is the ways that the, the concept and precepts from before we were even here, he decided what was right and what was wrong. We have knowledge of it, but we don't decide what is right and what is wrong. We submit to what he says is right and wrong. Right. Amen? Amen? And so it's not by our righteousness. It's not by our judgment. Because we can make the wrong judgment. Amen? Amen. And Amen. we do. We make, the, we make the wrong judgment. Sometimes we judge people. Right? right? And he said, don't do that. Because who created them? Okay. He did. And so if he created them, is it our job to punish them? No. Everything we do should be in love. Everything that comes out of our mouth should be edifying. Yes. Now, don't get it twisted, though. Some correction is, yes. is edifying. Right. It's, right. it's building you up, yes. right? right? So we also have to be open to discipline. Mm -hmm. We also have to be open to somebody saying, hey, that doesn't line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? So we do have to be open to that. So when I say right. that everything we do, everything we say should be edifying, that means that it should be building you up and not tearing you down. Right. Now, some people feel when you give correction that they're being torn down. Mm -hmm. But you just make sure you're giving that in love. Amen. You make sure that you have the that yes. you're you're um you're using you're you're listening to the Holy Spirit. Amen. That you are submitted to God. Amen. The Bible says if you're doing something, you can't take a beam out of somebody else, or you can't take a splinter out of somebody else's eye, right. and you have a beam in your eye. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so this comes with submitting to the word of God. Amen? Because mm -hmm. God, he, he wants to use us to be able to be blessing right. to each other. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. And he gives us gifts and abilities to be able to be a blessing mm -hmm. to the body of Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. But that comes with transformation power. Because you can't go to somebody and tell them what you think. 
We have to go and tell them what thus says the Lord, what the word of God says. Or if they want to know what to do in this situation, and you know, because you've seen it in the word, and you go get the word and give it to them. Amen? And so we want to be able to be used like that. But we have to, hallelujah, first of all, we have to repent and submit to God. Amen? It's Romans 8 and 6 says, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. So there's that word governed again. So we have to allow ourselves to be governed. Amen? So there is a government. It's not, you know, sometimes when we get saved and if it's not explained to us, we're coming in here like, thinking of every little tiny thing that we, you know, need to change and need to do, and then it becomes a performance-based thing. Right. But this is not a performance-based thing, amen? Mm -hmm. It's a relationship, amen? Mm -hmm. So we come into right relationship with God, and then the Holy Spirit comes on the inside, and he begins to transform us, amen? Mm -hmm. But it's with the renewing of our mind, because as he's teaching us, we have the option to resist mm -hmm. or to submit, right. amen? Amen? And so we want to make sure that we are submitting to the government, to the ruler, to the governor, amen, to the Holy Spirit who is teaching us, amen, yes, yes. hallelujah. Amen. So, um, so that, that's, we're, we're governed, we're being governed, um, we want to be governed by the spirit, and that's life and peace and not governed by the flesh. And so I want to read um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 6 in the message. It says, it wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it. All of us doing what we felt like doing, when we felt like doing it. All of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with us, the whole lot of us. We were talking about that rainbow today. Amen. When he sees that rainbow, he reminds himself, he said, I'm not going to destroy the earth. Hallelujah. By, by a flood. Amen. But hallelujah. He's giving us all time and opportunity to come into the kingdom. Amen. He's, he said he's not slack concerning his promise. Um, he said, but he's long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So he's long suffering. He's waiting for us to come to repentance. He's waiting for us to go and share the gospel. He's waiting for us to bring people in and to introduce them to him. Amen? Yes. He's waiting, hallelujah, because he said he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. Amen? He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in, believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? And so it says also that the, um, he didn't come to condemn the world. And then, so again, he's not coming to condemn you. All of our sins were washed away before, while we were sinners, before right. we even came right. into the kingdom. Come on. Come on. He, he washed away all our sins so that we have open opportunity yeah. to have relationship. He said, come to me boldly. Come to me freely. Yes. Amen. Yes. He said, and then you learn the truth, and the truth will make you free. Yes. Amen. And so yes. we have to keep rehearsing the truth. We have to keep learning the truth. Yes. We have to keep speaking the yes. truth. Amen. Yes. Until that truth becomes a reality. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Peter was able to walk on the water. Amen. Because he had a word from the Lord. So he bid him to come. Amen. Yes. And so that word that he told him come was holding him up. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. And so the yes. word he told us to come. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that word is going to hold us up. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. We talked yes. about um, a, a week ago about on mm -hmm. um, Christ the solid rock I stand. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. All other ground is seeking right. 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 Hallelujah. So if you're standing on God's word, hallelujah, mm -hmm. then we're going to be yes. able to stand. Amen? Right. So back to, okay, yes. transformation. Yes. Hallelujah. So again, we have Romans 12 and 2 as our base scripture. Amen? But also, so more scripture about transformation. 2 Timothy 3. 16 and 17 says all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 
Amen. God has works for us to do. Amen. And so it's by his word, amen, that we're going to learn, hallelujah, what doctrine is. Doctrine is what we believe, amen. Doctrine is the word of God, the truth, amen. And then it says, um, it says it's good for doctrine, and then it, it's profitable for reproof, amen, to show you where you're wrong, amen, because sometimes the Bible says there's a way that seems right to man, but the end leads to destruction, so you may have been taught some things from the time you were little and been instilled in you that this is what you should do in this situation, or this is the way to go, but the, the Bible says the end of that can lead to destruction, amen, and so we have to get the word of God, because it says, his word is life. Right. Amen. And so we, we're striving for life. Amen. And that word is so powerful that it'll change things. Amen. Yeah. So where you may have been walking in the way of destruction or death, you get that word and it'll put you on the right path and it will cover and protect you. And if uh, by chance, if something was going on in your body, amen, he said, by his stripes we are healed. So there's a remedy for even your physical ailments, amen, hallelujah. And if your mind, hallelujah, it needs to be changed, amen, the Bible will change your mind. The Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul or converting the soul, amen. So the, the word of the Lord, amen, but he took out the performance base of the law, having to meet every required, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. He fulfilled that law, the Ten Commandments, the the more than over 600 commandments. He fulfilled all that, amen? So you can focus on relationship, amen? So that he can work on you from the inside out and change you. And as he begins to do that, then it's our job to agree with him, amen? Because if we agree with the word of God, amen, hallelujah. And so as we begin to agree with the word, then we'll begin to, to see that manifested in our lives, amen. We'll begin to see those changes, amen. Hallelujah. And in the area you haven't seen the word working yet, you find that word that you need, you keep speaking that word, you believe that word, you go over it and over it, amen, until you believe it, amen, until it becomes reality for you. We can hold on to the word of God like an anchor, amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says his word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder between soul and spirit. That word is going to tell you what's you, and that word is going to tell you what's him, amen? And so it divides, and it says it even goes down to the joints and the marrow, amen? So it can physical and spiritual. The word has got us, amen? Hallelujah. So we have to submit to his word, amen? Hallelujah. It says to seek him. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're seeking him. Hallelujah. We're seeking his word. Amen. And so it says the word is good for reproof to show us where we're wrong, but it doesn't just leave us there. Amen. It says it's for correction. So it's going to correct us. When it shows you where you're wrong, it's not to beat you down. It's not so that you put yourself down. It's so you can live. Amen. He said, hallelujah. He wants us to live. We have everlasting life. We're going from life to life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he wants us to live. So he's correcting us. Amen. Because we're living in the kingdom even now. So he's correcting our mindset. He's correcting our our thoughts and the things in our heart that are not like him. He's he's getting them out of there. Amen. He's uprooting those things that don't belong to the kingdom. Amen. And putting those things, planting those things that do. Amen. Amen. And so then he sends people, hallelujah, to water. He sends people, hallelujah, to plant. He said, but God will give the increase. Amen. If God gives the increase, so don't judge anybody. Amen. Don't don't look at somebody and count them out because when it's the appropriate time, amen, God will give that increase. Amen. And so just know that that word is being planted. That word is being watered. And so when there's a seed in the ground, you may not see it, but you have to water it and you have to, you know, um, you, you have to you have to plant it, then you have to water it. And so as you're doing that, you may not see the seed growing, but eventually you're going to see that thing sprout up. Amen? Amen? And so you just keep watering, and you just keep, yeah. hallelujah, you just keep planting. Amen? Because yeah. it's not for you to give the increase. Amen? Amen. So, Amen? So it's for him to do it in his time. Amen? Hallelujah. He knows when it's time for each and every person, for what they need. Because the Bible says, let patience have his perfect work, that um, that we would not lack anything, amen, hallelujah, so patience, we have to exercise patience for us, 
all. We're waiting to see that manifestation of that word, amen, and then for somebody else. And then we can't get impatient for somebody else's growth, somebody else's miracle, for somebody else. We can speak the word, but God is the one giving the increase, amen? amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then so it says for training and righteousness. So it's going to train us in how to be righteous. So we already have the righteousness imputed to us. Jesus' righteousness is upon us. Amen. So we're we're uh, righteous in the eyes of God. Amen. We're in right standing. Amen. But now we want to do the things that are righteous in his sight. Amen. We want to have works of repentance, works of a changed mind. Amen. It said that we're supposed to uh, repent. Amen. Because the kingdom of God is here. That means change your mind because the kingdom of God is here. So we have to change our mind about what is right and what is wrong. And even if you've been doing that for a long time and, and that seemed to have worked for you and it worked for grandma and it looked like it worked for auntie and uncle, but if you know that that's not right, if God's word says that's not right, there is another way and that's the way we're to follow. It says wide is the path that leads to destruction. So something may look like it's working, but it might not really be working. You might be on your way to destruction. It might not know it because you see, hey, this looks like it's working. But he said narrow is the way that leads to life. And that's the path we're on. The word does not leave this wide room for you to do this and that and then you still right. No, there is a right way, which is his way. He said, I am the way. The truth and the life. Amen. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's only one way. Amen. And it says narrow is that way. So we have to make sure that we are following God's word and doing, even as Pastor Paul would say, if it doesn't look popular. Because if we look in this world today, there's a lot of things that the Bible says that does not look popular. There's a lot of things that the Bible says that. Your kids will look at you like, why, why are you telling me to do this? You know, but we have to stand on that word of God, amen? As a teacher, as a, a counselor, as a parent, as a grandparent, as an auntie, as an uncle, as whatever you are to somebody, we stand on the word of God, amen? Because the word of God is what's going to work, amen? The Bible says we train up our children in the way they should go. And then when they're old, they won't depart from it, amen? So they're going to remember because you did the planting and you did the watering or God sent somebody to do some other planting and somebody to do some watering so that they're going to come back and they will come to their senses. The prodigal son, when he did everything he was going to do, he came to his senses. He was like, wait a minute. Dad's house is right there, and I know I got to go back, and if I go back, I'm going to, you know, I got to do it Dad's way, but I'm going to go to the servant's quarters, and, and maybe, you know, he just let me back in there. Yeah. But he said, no, come in the house, yeah. and he wants you to live in there, amen? Yeah. So he's telling us, come back in the kingdom, yeah. live in here, yeah. amen? Right. Don't live in the world, yeah. amen? You don't have to struggle, because he said, if you seek first the kingdom yeah. and his righteousness, yes. then all the things that you need will be added unto you. Yes. He said, I know the things that you need. I know you need shelter. Yes. I know you need I know you need uh, clothes. Yes. I know you need food. Yes. Amen. No he said, so seek first the kingdom, oh and then all these things will be added unto yes. you. Yes. Now, let me tell you, the world, when I went in psychology class, there's something called Maslow's hierarchy, and Maslow's hierarchy says we need food, we need shelter, we need all these things. Yes. Amen. Yes. He's, but, but that's not what God said. Come on. God said, seek first the kingdom yes. of God. Yes. That's first. Yes. Amen. And then all these things will be added unto yes. you. Amen. And so we want to oh. remember to seek God's kingdom. Remember, he yes. said the government yes. was coming on his shoulders. Yes. Amen. He said the kingdom of God is yes. here. Yes. Amen. And as citizens of a kingdom, the king is responsible for providing yes. for the people. Right. Amen? Amen. And so if you are a citizen, and not only are we citizens, we're his children. Amen. And so we have to remember that's Father. Amen. Hallelujah. And not only Father, but he is King. And so he's Baba. providing. Amen. Amen. And he told us, he gave us dominion here. So he's going to make sure that that word is coming forth. Amen. Right, right. And his word gives us that dominion. Amen. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we are part of the kingdom. And so everything has to submit to Jesus. That's right. And we are seated in him. We are in him. 
Everything has to submit to him. So when you're speaking his word, when you're speaking his law, rulership of what should be and how it should be, everything has to submit to that. Amen. So that's why we need that word in our mouth. Amen. Amen. And that's why we have to submit to his kingdom because that is what's going to work. That is what's going to stand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So transformation. Um, so we have, you. first you get born again. Amen. The first step in transformation is getting born again. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 says, since you've been born again, not a perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. Amen. So we've been born again. And in order to be a citizen of the kingdom, what do you have to do? You have to be what? Into it. Born into it. So we were born in this world, right? And in Ephesians 2, it was saying, and so we were living after our own lust and flesh and all of that. But now when we get saved and we accept Jesus as our Savior, we get what? Reborn, born again. And so now we're born in and we are officially able to be citizens. We're not outcasts and we're not outsiders. Amen. We're born into it. Amen. Yes. And so you are a new creation in Christ. Amen. Amen. That the old things are passed away and all things have become new. Amen. Amen. And so we are citizens in the kingdom. We've been born into it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're his children. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so. Then it talks about, um, so transformation, transformation, our new self. It says, put off your old self, which belonged to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And then how many know desires can be deceitful? You think you just want one thing or you think you want something. Next thing you know, your whole goal and aim is trying to get that thing or trying to do this. And then you forget about, hallelujah, that God is your provider. You forget about hallelujah, worshiping him. You forget about thanking him, amen, and that he is king and that he said he will provide for you, amen. And so we start worrying about how we're going to get this and how we're going to get that. But he said, seek first the kingdom of God and then righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So just because you haven't seen it yet, amen, does not mean that it's not there and it's not coming and it's going to manifest, amen. So we have to believe that, amen. Hallelujah. So that's Amen. renewing our minds to believe that what God's word says is what he's going to do. Amen. Right. Amen. He is a man. He's not a man that he should lie. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Another thing about the new self, it says, Colossians 3 and 5, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. So those earthly, fleshly things, we have to put those off. Amen. And hallelujah. We are fasting right now. Amen. amen. And we are we're doing our fast. And fasting is something that helps us to, to get control of our flesh. Amen. Because the flesh will tell you, let's eat right now, or let's do this right now, or I want to do this right now. But when you shut that down and say, no, this is what we're doing right now. Yes. The more you do it in yes. that, the the easier it becomes, amen, and you focus on the word and you focus on God, then you shut down those the, the flesh because it's going to keep rising and trying to come up, amen, but it says we have to daily crucify that flesh, amen, hallelujah, crucify that flesh daily, amen, so it tries to rise up, but hallelujah, that's not God's word, amen, that's not what, they said there's no good thing that dwells in the flesh, amen, no good thing that dwells in the flesh, so you can be like, oh, but I'm going to, you know, it's eight o'clock, and I, but I'm going to eat because I'm hungry, or I'm this, I'm that. There's no good thing that dwells in that flesh, so we have to get control of that thing, amen? And have you noticed when you're not reading the Word, and when you're not studying, and when you're not praying, amen, it's easier. There's something in you when you want to go back to that that is pushing and pulling the other way. Right. Like, you know what, I'm just going to watch TV because I just need to relax my mind, or I'm going to... I'm just going to go Come read on. a book because I just don't feel like, you know, there's something pulling against it. Yeah. Yes. That's the time you start oh, pushing yes. the other way. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. That's the time when you start praying and you say, yes. Lord, I, I may not even know yes. what to pray right now, but God, I, I, I don't want this. Whatever it is that's pulling this way, yes. Lord God, I want to be able to stand yes. and I want to go forward that's with right. you. Amen. Right. Amen. And so you talk to God. Mm -hmm. You have you have the throne Amen. available to you. He said, come boldly before the throne. Again, another reference to kingdom. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. Come to the throne. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Grace yes. to obtain mercy. Right. And grace to help in the time Amen. of need. Amen. Grace that unmerited favor. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's available for 
for you. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. The, the thing that, hallelujah, we don't deserve the divine influence. Of, hallelujah. The, the all of what grace is, hallelujah, it's available to us. Amen. So those are some, some verses about our transformed new yes. self. Amen. And so then we also want to talk about transform, being transformed by the Holy Spirit. Yes. And then the Holy Spirit, it says in 1 Corinthians um, 6 and 11, uh -huh. it says, And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit, he begins to, to wash us and sanctify us and cleanse us. Amen. So it's not just you with a desire to want to do right that's going to do it for you. Amen. Amen. But the Holy Spirit, it says, the Bible says that he is um, working in you to will and to do what is his desire and what is he, what is right. And again, that's where we're talking about submitting. Yes. Because he, you know, the Holy Spirit say, don't do this or don't go that way. Or even sometimes you just won't have peace, you know. Sometimes you may not know the voice of the Holy Spirit all the way, but you won't have peace when you get ready to make a move and you're like, Okay, I don't feel like I should make that move. And you, you know, you start thinking about it. And so that's a good time to pray. It said, God, lead me in the right direction. Because he will do something to lead you. Whether if you aren't familiar with his voice, he'll send somebody to, to answer your question. He will show you a scripture or he'll put it on have where I have questions. And I went to go on YouTube to look up a, a sermon to listen to at work. And it'll be on the exact subject of what I was asking. Yeah. 
got a minute where he got stuck in outer space, yes. amen? Yes. And when he was on his way home, amen, there was a little window, mm -hmm. a little triangle window, and he could see the earth, amen, but the navigation system wasn't working, and he just had to keep focused on the earth, and so when it would go this way, he would steer so yes. that he could still see, yes. hallelujah, yes. that's the yes. earth right there, yes. amen? Yes. And that's what we do. We keep our focus on the kingdom, amen? amen. Hallelujah, we keep our focus on God, amen? We keep our focus there. So when you feel yourself drifting to the left or drifting to the right, he said the word is supposed to be frontless to your eyes to keep you straight ahead, to keep you moving in the direction of the kingdom, to keep you moving in the direction of life, to keep you moving on that narrow path that leads to life, amen? amen. And so the Holy Spirit is trans first you get born again, amen? That's the first transformation. And he took care of that because he died on the cross and his blood covered us from all of our sins. Amen. And then we're transformed by the Holy Spirit. That is his, he's in us, working his will in us, amen? And changing us and teaching us uh, and comforting us, amen? And then hardship can change us. So be anchored in that word and just wait on him, amen? To have the end result. He's taking you there. You may not see how, you may not see, it may look like you're doing all different kind of stuff, but you have the end result. Hold on yes. to that. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then lastly, it says, and I am Philippians 1 and 6. That's another one of our year scriptures. And I am sure of this, right. that he who began a good sure. work in you and then will bring it to completion right. at the day of Jesus Christ. Yes, no. So he is working in you to bring yes. the bring his, his will and desire and you Thank to completion. You, who he called you to be, who he said you can be, and ultimately, yeah. hallelujah, the completion of his work where he can be with you and you can be with him forever. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You, so let him transform you. Submit to the government. Amen. Yes. Submit to his kingdom. Yes. And he's committed to taking care of you yes. because he is king. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. my finances. Every penny shall produce for God and for me. The gospel shall be preached. Lives shall be changed. Souls shall be saved. Bodies shall be healed. And Satan shall be stopped. The needs of this ministry are already met. It shall produce for me shall produce for me good measure, good measure. Press, down, press, press down, down, shake it together, shake it together. and running over. Will God give back to me through the hands of others that I might give again? I know that it's done. I stand on God's word that it's done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It is, it is done. And we are going to also go over a few announcements. Um, we will be back here on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Amen. 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 Uh, my brother's keepers meet every other Thursday. Amen. Amen. Uh, the marriage retreat is on April 19th, Amen. the 21st. Yay. All right. All right. Amen. 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 And um, all minds are clear. Amen. Leadership Saturday. Le oh, leadership, leadership Saturday. Saturday morning. Yes, ma'am. 
to prosper because I apply the word.